Hey guys and gals, it's your buddies Drew, Ralphie, and RJ. For Movie History's Mysteries and Ferocious Feline Productions, you know one of the most interesting things about looking back into some of these these mysteries, these, these myths, these legends, the folklore of our country is finding these really interesting tales from the back country. Today we're going to take a look at one that comes out of Appalachia. It's a very interesting story. It's a very interesting piece of folklore. And well, just check it out. This is good. He grimaces and curses to himself, believing he had missed. 
that is, until he notices his dogs sniffing at something wriggling in a puddle of blood. It was the creature's tail. Unusually long and about as thick as his wrist, it would have to do. That night, the man cooked the tail and shared it with his dogs, feeling full for the first time since the snow began to fall. He and his furry companions went to sleep feeling satisfied. In the dead of night, the man awoke to an eerie voice emanating from deep within the woods near his cabin. It was an echoey, otherworldly whisper that seemed to be calling out on the wind. The man, severely disturbed by the chilling message, sent his dogs out in the woods to find the source of the noise. After a terrifying half hour of silence, Eno and Calico returned, with their brother Ino nowhere to be seen. Fearing the worst, the man kicks himself for thinking himself relieved, believing the creature had taken the dog as tribute. However, the whisper returned shortly, this time growing into more of a soft call. Tilly Po, Tilly Po, where is my Tilly Po? Panicking, the man sent his dogs out again, only for the same cruel fate to repeat itself. Only Calico returned to him. Now, the call grew into an annoyed growl. Tilly Po, Tilly Po, give me back. My daily pole. When the final dog did not return, the man cowered under his blankets, praying that the creature was satisfied. After what felt like hours of dead silence, the man poked his head up and gazed around the room. To his surprise, he saw nothing. Then suddenly the beast pounced on his chest from beneath the bed and pinned him to the mattress, its sharp claws digging into his flesh. The man cried out, and in that moment he realized what he was looking at. A large cat with gnashing teeth and blood-red eyes. It was this creature from the woods, the one whom he had shot at mere hours before. It growled and brushed its maw against his ear. Te-li-po, te-li-po, I want my te li it said, its voice a guttural snarl. I don't got it. I don't got your Taily Po. The hunter lied, desperate to save his life. The beast simply muttered the same phrase, this time digging its claws deeper into the man's chest. The man screamed in a mix of pain and terror and finally croaked out, I ate it. I ate your Taily Po. It's gone. The creature sat in silence for a moment before tearing into the man's chest, tearing flesh and breaking bone. The man's screams echoed into the mountains and were quickly silenced. The cabin was found the following spring. Neither the man nor his dogs were ever found. The same goes for the creature. However, on a dark winter's night, they say you can hear an echoey, otherworldly whisper that seems to be calling out in the wind. Tilipo, Tilipo, now I've got my Tilipo. Welcome back. You know, it's like I was saying in the beginning, some of this folklore, these legends and myths that we find, they're somewhat believable. This one, I don't know. Giant cat monsters running around talking about you eating their taily po? I mean, you guys know the kind of stuff I'm into. And I'm not going to just disregard anything as complete fiction. They say for every story, every myth, every legend out there, there's a seed of truth 
that exists in it. Watch the truth behind the old story of Taily Poe or Taily Bones. I'm afraid the people who originally told this story are long gone. So for those of us in our generation and generations to come, the story of Taily Poe is just one more mystery that history left behind. But that's all we got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this look at a little bit of folklore out of Appalachia. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. God bless you. God love you. We do. That's right. We'll see you out there. Clear to the northeast, the Appalachians. Today, we're going to take a look at a very interesting myth, some folklore that come out that comes out of a cup, but a pookie poo poo, a chicky butt. Uh huh.